All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you again for joining us for today's July Networking Masterclass. My name is Carol, and I will be your moderator. Now, today, our guest speakers are, um, we have Kamal, Mayor, and Ashke joining us. Our agenda, we're going to flip a little bit. Um, we're actually going to do our product update first. So Akshay will be sharing with us updates around Citrix Secure Internet Access. And then that will be followed by our main topic of the hour, which is app modernization with Citrix ADC and ADM. And then followed by a brief um, updates on the latest news and content, and then tell you a little bit about um, an event we're really excited about happening in the Americas in the Americas called Demo Day Live happening in August. So definitely stick around for that. And then finally, we really um, take your feedback and encourage your feedback um, because it really helps drive the content and the improvements that we do. So we've decided, um, we started tying our giveaway with the feedback. So basically, we just ask that um, before you exit or when you exit, you will see a survey pop up. Anyone that fills in the survey will be entered into a drawing for a chance to win this month's prize, which is um, a pair of Beat Studio Buds. So um, please uh, fill out that survey for a chance to win. And due to shipping um, uh, restrictions, we do have to limit that to U.S. and Canada residents only. Whoops. So now, um, let me go ahead and pass on the computer rights to Akshay, who will begin um, the, the presentation covering. Uh, whoops, do you see your screen share there? Sorry, Akshay. There we go, now it is. Okay, I think it's just a little bit of a lag. Um, yeah. And that's, that's one of the issues with, with, with working from home. So. And in fact, that's that's something that we'll talk about today as well. So, Carol, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, folks, uh, really appreciate you joining us today. It's morning for some of you, afternoon for the others. You're taking your time. Um, you're taking precious time out of your day to join us today. Really, really appreciate that. Now, um, Carol mentioned that the, the, the main focus area of today's session is, is something that Komal and Mayur will cover. But I wanted to just chime in, probably take just five to ten minutes of your time to talk about Citrix Secure Internet Access. This solution was launched on February 3rd of this year, and it has been a success in the market. Reason being that this solution hits hard on um, priorities that CIOs and CISOs are trying to deal with today. So these, these issues that, that this solution addresses are around remote worker or home-based worker productivity, home-based worker security, and just simplifying operations from a networking perspective as well as an, uh, a security perspective. So let's dive into some case studies and some stories from real um, enterprises that have recently deployed Citrix Secure Internet Access. For those of you that have not heard about this particular solution or have not explored the solution yet, it, the Citrix Secure Internet Access is essentially a comprehensive cloud-delivered security solution. So in at a high level, just imagine that if there is a security stack in a data center, and that's a really comprehensive security stack, full with the secure web gateway, the firewall, cloud access security broker, malware protection, DLP, and sandbox, you take that security stack, throw it up into the cloud across 100 different points of presence. Okay, so the full security stack projected into the cloud across 100 different points of presence in a manner that is fully scalable, such that it can um, inspect, it can uh, decrypt and inspect and protect all traffic, including SSL and TLS traffic. Why is this relevant? This is relevant because SSL TLS traffic volumes are increasing. And typically, if you're using a hardware-based firewall, a hardware-based security, your hardware is, is going to run into some performance issues as more SSL traffic comes through because SSL traffic needs to be decrypted and encrypted and then inspected, so there's more compute needed. So um, we, we, are, we are available across 100 points of presence, which means that there is no backhauling of traffic that's needed. We inspect all traffic, um, including SSL and TLS, without any performance limitations, and we block against the latest threats. So it is, it, let's just say hypothetically, if there was a new threat that discovered somewhere in Japan earlier this morning, we would get near real-time updates about that threat 
from our 10 plus different threat engine that we subscribe to. And based on those uh, threat updates, we will be able to protect your organization against the latest threats. So uh, because there is no backhaul of, um, of, of traffic, um, going back to this particular box, if there's no backhaul of traffic, remote workers like me um, tends to have a, a better user experience. Um, all traffic becomes, uh, it remains protected. Um, regardless of what kind of traffic that is, whether it's encrypted or not, and I'm protected against the latest threats, um, the latest malware, the latest ransomware, um, and all of that, uh, all, all of the, um, all of the um, creative um, software that the dark web produces. So uh, before we go into any further details about the case studies, I'm going to quickly ask you guys a question. And Carol, if you don't mind just bringing up the poll, I'd love to learn a little bit more about how many of you have already begun to explore about cloud delivered security do you have you have you started exploring these solutions are you still in your nascent stages are you still on the fence or you're probably not exploring them yet carol do you want to bring that up for me please yes it is up um there might be a little bit of a delay but audience do you guys see it i see it on my end the poll is up and we have about 28 percent of the, the voters have voted so far so we want to get at least 50 if you all can submit your answers hello i have not seen the results on my side so um, okay do you yeah, want me to read them to you i can read you the percentages if that helps <laughs> we have about yeah, 31 how many, how many said yes yes 31 percent said yes uh, 34 percent said no 11 percent said already deployed and 23 percent are undecided i'm going to go ahead and hide that's, that's it now awesome. that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome thank you carol and and so that's 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 what's expected see cloud delivered security is still an emerging space so there's a lot of our of the enterprises that we speak to that are still beginning to explore this particular type of solution um the ones that have already deployed the solution are seeing the benefits. And that's the story that we are going to discuss today. We are going to discuss as to what are the benefits that these enterprises are seeing. Um, before we go into further case studies, I want to just quickly point out that Citrix Secure Internet Access is part of the unified approach to SASE that Citrix offers. Now, SASE is Secure Access Service Edge, which is an architectural framework that Gartner put together. Now, um, Citrix not only offers all the ingredients for SASE, but we also bring all those ingredients together in a way that, in my humble opinion, no other vendor can. So we tie these ingredients together through Citrix's unified management through Citrix Cloud. And so you have the cloud delivered security from Citrix Secure Internet Access. You have zero trust access functions through Secure Workspace Access. You have analytics and SD-WAN functionality all tied together through automation under the hood, as well as single pane of glass management on top of the hood. So folks, check it out, um, but let's get into some of the stories that our customers have been uh, have been benefiting from. So the first case study is uh, essentially with an American investment management firm. Now this is a very popular investment management firm. Unfortunately, we don't have rights to name them yet, um, but the this particular organization um, was using one of our competitors they were using another cloud delivered security solution we started talking to this account regarding sd van and when we went to this account we started talking to them about sd van they asked us whether citrix sd van in integrated with that uh, with the cloud delivered security solution that they were using now yes the answer is yes citrix sd van integrates with a plethora of different uh, third party security solutions and yeah we integrated with their cloud delivered security solution as well but we asked them if they would be willing to check out citrix secure internet access and when they did they found benefits and advantages that citrix secure internet access offered from a technology perspective and from an automation perspective with citrix sd van so twofold the first one was from a technology perspective the benefit was that when this customer wanted to integrate with upstream cloud services and they wanted to do allow and block lists for IP addresses, we made it a lot easier to integrate with those upstream cloud services because we gave a static set of IP addresses that egressed from our uh, Citrix Secure Internet Access Com in comparison to the competitor that was essentially giving a randomized set of IP addresses. And now this is a nuance that you only typically get to know once you start implementing the solution and the and our 
customer was kind of suffering from from those pains after they had implemented the other solution. So we were able to alleviate these pains by giving them Citrix Secure Internet Access. As they started deploying Citrix Secure Internet Access, they saw the benefits of the automation between Citrix SD-WAN and Citrix SIA. So this is a great solution um, when it comes to convergence of networking and security functionality. And um, SASE, as I said, it's an integration of SD-WAN, analytics, uh, uh, cloud delivered security and zero trust. So they have two of those components already. They're beginning to explore zero trust access and they're beginning to develop their SASE stack. So again, it's a great story. Um, uh, it's, 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 it's an organization that's forward looking in how they want to approach IT and cybersecurity and they're really achieving those benefits by deploying Citrix's unified approach to SASE. The second case study that we'll talk about is a customer in, in EMEA. Now this customer is, uh, it, it basically produces and supplies construction raw materials. Now this customer was using, uh, they have a fairly lean IT team. They were using two different um, uh, security vendors, hardware appliance security vendors to provide um, anti-malware, firewall and logging functionality. Even though they were using two different security vendors, they still did not have all the functionality that they desired. So when we started talking to this customer and we were talking to them about um, a Citrix virtual apps upgrade. So at that time, this customer, we, we basically offered them, uh, we, we allowed them to try out Citrix Secure Internet Access. They explored the solution and they loved it. They loved it because they were able to reduce the number of vendors they had to work with instead of having to work with two different security vendors they could just work with Citrix and get more functionality than what they earlier had. They were also able to get rid of hardware. So they were able to reduce the, remove the hardware and, and replace with cloud delivered security service, which is our product. And so that was faster deployment time. That was lesser operational overhead and that was better functionality at almost infinite scale. So that a whole lot of different benefits by actually modernizing the, uh, their, their deployment and their, their implementation. Uh, um, the customer is, uh, is, is extremely happy with the solution and um, um, uh, they, they continue to be a, a very happy Citrix customer. Now, and the last case study that I want to quickly talk about is another customer that's in Europe. And this customer is, um, uh, they, with the increase in ransomware attacks recently, they wanted to rethink and relook at their cybersecurity posture. They were also concerned about the productivity of home-based workers. Um, and lastly, they, like the, the previous customer, they wanted a solution that was operationally simple to manage. They wanted a solution that was able to, that they could, um, that was, uh, even though it improved their cybersecurity posture, the solution will actually make it simple for them to manage the, the, uh, the, the product. And so um, in, in line with that, they, they reached out to Citrix <clears throat> primarily from a, uh, from a virtualization, <clears throat> I'm sorry, primarily from a virtualization perspective. But when we talk to them about Citrix Secure Internet Access, which can be used to protect all employees, employees that are using virtualized applications as well as employees that are not using virtualized applications. So we talked to them about our solution. We also shared with them how we integrate with Microsoft Cloud App Security and how we integrate with, with other different services that are available in the market from a, from a SIM perspective or from, uh, from a networking perspective. So when we shared all of this information, they were really happy with the product uh, and they ended up purchasing Citrix Secure Internet Access along with Citrix Virtual App Service, um, Citrix SD-WAN and Citrix Analytics. So as you can see, there was it was a, a full modernization conversation that they went through and they were able to uh, improve their security posture while actually deploying solutions that help them uh, simplify operations as well. So that resulted in better collaboration and productivity over Office 365 and other business critical applications and an architecture and a solution set that is actually simple to manage um, even when you're trying to protect remote workers and home-based workers. So again, a really powerful, um, uh, a powerful um, case study there. Um, folks, we've seen a lot of different case studies like this. Um, uh, the ones that I presented to you were in America and, and uh, EMEA. We've seen some very successful uh, case studies in APJ as well. Uh, the product is gaining traction. My request to you at the end of this session, at least my part of this session, is that 
check it out check check out um what are your requirements within your enterprise from a network modernization perspective if you're trying to get rid of backhaul connections if you're trying to get rid of the hardware in your data center then how do you need to evolve your cybersecurity posture and if to evolve your cybersecurity posture if you need cloud delivered security then citrix already has something for you because of the integrations between different citrix products what you're going to end up getting uh, the whole is going to be greater than the sum of the parts. So do reach out to us if you have any more questions. We'd love to talk to you about this or any other cybersecurity modernization conversation within your enterprise. Thank you so much. Carol, over to you. Thank you, Akshay. We did get a few questions. I know that you're in between meetings. So for those of you that submitted those, um, actually, I know you have to run. We'll go ahead and um, send those over to you and reach out to those individual um, who had some questions for you um, later on. So don't worry, we will we will get back to you on those. All right, now so uh, for our... No, thank you. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks, everyone. And so now we're going to go to our spotlight um, uh, topic of the day, which is app modernization with ADC and ADM. And so I'll go ahead and give presenter controls to um, Kamal. Kamal? Again, apologize, folks. There's a bit of a delay um, on our end, so yeah. I do see your slide, though. So that's good. That was fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Carol, and uh, thanks, uh, Akshay, for such an awesome presentation. Uh, I'll now come to the main agenda of today's masterclass, uh, which is uh, what is Citrix solution for modern applications. So the agenda is I'll talk about uh, uh, the Citrix stack for cloud native and modern applications. Uh, and since we've been working in this space for a couple of years now, uh, what are some of the popular use cases that we see emerging among our customer base? And then uh, I would also like to talk about how uh, you can reach out to the Kubernetes platform team who are really at the center of this uh, app modernization exercise. And then we have uh, very interesting product demos where we'll talk about our solution and we'll give you a 360 degree view of uh, how uh, these popular use cases are, uh, are are so simple and so easy to deploy uh, with, uh, with these demos. And then we'll cap it up with, uh, with some useful resources that you can follow up uh, with your team, with your uh, colleagues and uh, also some lab resources that you can use uh, to uh, to try out Citrix uh, solutions in your own environment. So, uh, so what is happening is that the organizations are now moving to cloud native or modern application architectures. And I keep using these words interchangeably, uh, cloud native or modern applications. But essentially what I'm saying is that the applications uh, which are moving to cloud, which are using uh, cloud native technologies like containers and Kubernetes and uh, Red Hat OpenShift and other uh, Kubernetes distributions. So what is happening is that in this space, a lot of uh, new type of applications are being deployed. And according to some estimates, uh, nearly 75% uh, of all applications will be delivered as containers uh, by 2024. So this shift is very much there. It's a paradigm shift, which is happening in the way applications are being uh, architected. New applications are being designed as containers, as well as the existing legacy applications are being migrated from monoliths to uh, containers. And by monoliths or three tier application, we mean the application which are uh, architected as web application and database layers. So, so the, this is how the current situation is. Citrix ADC is used in front of uh, typical VM or bare metal based applications. But we are seeing that a lot of our customers are using Citrix, the same Citrix ADC in front of uh, Kubernetes applications, uh, which could be running on on-prem Kubernetes or OpenShift or on public cloud managed uh, uh, Kubernetes, such as EKS or AKS. In fact, uh, inside Citrix as well, because we deliver so many cloud-based applications uh, such as the uh, ADM service or, uh, or uh, SD WAN orchestrator and uh, a bunch of other internal services. These are all built uh, on modern cloud native principles. 
and the same Citrix ADC is used in front of uh, traditional as well as the, the cloud native applications. And why uh, is Citrix ADC used? Just the same uh, old but tried and tested uh, use cases of uh, serving Uber scale traffic, of protecting and uh, of protecting application and API traffic through WAP or bot management or AAA, and also providing layer seven policies, applying these layer seven rules to the incoming traffic for these uh, uh, traditional as well as cloud native applications. And this is how the cloud native stack looks like. Uh, by cloud native stack, I mean all the uh, bunch of uh, solutions that we have prepared, that we have created for you to uh, really supercharge your cloud native applications. So, with, which means uh, a, a bunch of containers uh, such as uh, CPX, uh, ingress controller, observability exporter, etc., which run inside the Kubernetes cluster and also the traditional ADCs which are running in front of uh, Kubernetes cluster. So the, this makes up our uh, cloud native stack. And uh, we see that several customers who come out, who reach out to us there, uh, when we study their NS configuration for, uh, for troubleshooting, uh, we see that uh, it contains keywords like Kubernetes and OpenShift and, and, and a bunch of uh, cloud native uh, applications which are running behind the uh, MPX or BPX or SDX. So the cloud native stack essentially comprises of these ADCs which are running in your premise as well as the, a bunch of new uh, container solutions that we have developed with starting from CPX which is a containerized load balancer then the ingress controller which is at the center of all the automation that we have done for our cloud native application and then a bunch of other uh, containers which are used precisely for, for some precise functions such as observability exporter, which is used to export metrics, logs, and traces to uh, popular open source tools like Prometheus, Grafana, Elasticsearch, Kibana, etc. So at this point of time, I would like to uh, understand from you how many of you are currently using uh, cloud native applications. So I would like to run a quick poll to get that sense. I'll give you just five more seconds to uh, to see if some of you want to submit your responses. All right, uh, thanks a lot. Thank, and I have one more question because this is going to help me in uh, talking about my next section. Uh, so I want to understand how many of you or or which job profile do you associate yourself most with. So are you from the IT network operations team? Are you from the modern DevOps team or from the Kubernetes platform team or the cloud operations team? Uh, all right, so that is good. And I'll share the results of this poll. As expected, a lot of you are from uh, IT operations uh, team and or the networking team. Which is, uh, which is where Citrix ADC is really a very, very popular tool. Uh, and uh, then a lot of you are also from uh, the cloud operations or the DevOps team. So, so this brings me to an, a very interesting conversation <clears throat> that, uh, that happens inside the organizations about, sorry, yeah, about uh, how, uh, our, our typical customers who are IT or operations, uh, <clears throat> IT or networking operators, uh, how can you be more effective in this modern cloud native environment? Because in these cloud native environments, you will often have to work together with the cloud platform team or the cloud operations team who are responsible for managing the Kubernetes cluster and also who are responsible for uh, for deciding which all uh, products, external products or open source products or cloud services are to be used in this environment. So here's a typical example. So let's assume there are two uh, uh, stakeholders in the company. One is Tracy from the platform admin team and Mark from the application development team. So the charter of the platform team or the Kubernetes admin team is to make sure that all the applications that are being built are containerized. They are using modern development principles like Kubernetes or OpenShift. 
so so they typically reach out to all the development teams and they have their charter is to bring all these applications to these modern uh, application design principles and the application developers are really excited about this change because it helps in reducing a lot of problems that are there with traditional vm based applications or or the way in which uh, typical applications are deployed non cloud native applications are deployed but there is another additional problem which is <clears throat> how to expose these uh, applications to end users in security and this is where uh, the platform team has to reach out to the adc admin uh, which is uh, an overwhelmingly large majority of uh, of this webinar's audience where tracy uh, would reach out to people like you who will who are the adc admin adc operator and uh, and the platform admin would want that a uh, load balancer or an adc is provisioned in front of the kubernetes cluster so that the incoming traffic is secured incoming traffic is uh, also highly optimized and you are able to apply layer 7 policies on this in incoming traffic because uh, because this is something that you don't want your developers to really fiddle with uh, because this is a very sensitive area this is a very high performance and a secure area where you want the tried and tested solution of Citrix ADC to be used. So that's where you will provide security and uh, high performance to these cloud native applications as well. So this is how uh, we see typical conversations uh, that happen inside a customer base. And I've also seen a very interesting uh, uh, case where most of the times both the platform team and the Kubernetes and the IT operations team are sitting together to build this solution. So it's not uh, something which is the responsibility of either ADC team or the platform team uh, for, for delivering secure and high performance traffic to Kubernetes application. Both these teams come together and we have been a part of several meetings in which uh, both the teams are together and uh, you, it cuts across whether you are using an on-prem product or whether you are using a public clouds like Azure or AWS. So with this, I would like to talk about uh, some of the popular use cases which Citrix is enabling with its uh, modern apps portfolio. <clears throat> and we'll give demo of a few of these uh, use cases as well. So, so, and this will also help you in uh, uh, trying to, uh, uh, this will also help you in giving a message to your platform team or the Kubernetes admin team that how you can use Citrix ADC, which is an existing product that is in your environment, to be plugged into the modern app environment. So the first use case is where uh, if the customer or if you're using OpenShift, Red Hat OpenShift, then uh, OpenShift typically, uh, if it's an old OpenShift deployment, then you would want to migrate to a newer version of OpenShift because it has got all the good uh, features. Uh, and then secure features. So, and you also don't want that it should be a, a, a change that happens overnight. It's typically a gradual change. So you want that the traffic should be routed to the multiple OpenShift clusters. Uh, and this is this goes uh, in phases. Uh, it typically takes days or weeks. So you want that the traffic should be smartly routed to older as well as newer OpenShift clusters. And this is where Citrix ADC can help. We'll talk about uh, the details of how we enable this uh, in uh, uh, in a public cloud use case uh, in the in the demo section today. The other interesting use case is uh, very simple, where Citrix ADC is used in front of VM-based applications and container-based applications. The same ADC, the same instance, can be used to manage uh, traffic and to route traffic to the right VMs or the Kubernetes uh, containers. The third. And very uh, important use case is where customers who have advanced networking needs, uh, customers who want to make their own uh, networking changes because of the type of application they are handling. So, for example, a lot of uh, customers use Citrix ADC for direct server return use case, where if the uh, if the if the traffic is for uh, use cases like video delivery or for uh, high uh, or for file upload or file download kind of use cases where typically the request size is small but the response size is disproportionately high 
So in that case, we want the backend servers to send the traffic directly to the end users. In this case, if these applications are running inside a Kubernetes cluster, then we have a solution which can enable you to run direct server return uh, so that uh, the <clears throat> so that you don't end up having an ADC in between the response path. Uh, other solutions that we have, uh, other use cases that we have seen related to networking is uh, for managing ingress of TCP or UDP based applications. For example, it could be your legacy applications uh, such as the email exchange, et cetera, or, or databases which need to be exposed uh, to, uh, to your internal uh, users. The other interesting use case is uh, where uh, organizations are moving to advanced uh, cloud native architectures such as Service Mesh, uh, where uh, there is a high degree of uh, east-west traffic that is embedded between the Kubernetes containers and their Citrix ADC is used to, uh, to load balance the traffic, to make the internal east-west traffic secure and also apply a lot of API gateway kind functionalities such as uh, authentication or rate limiting uh, and, uh, and and making sure that this east-west traffic is highly secure and highly observable as well. And then the last part is about uh, uh, troubleshooting or observability of these uh, applications of cloud native applications. Uh, so what happens is these cloud native applications are uh, internally a complex web of uh, microservices which uh, which talk to each other to deliver the end user response and uh, if something goes wrong let's say if there is a high latency or if some service is acting up then it's uh, it's a challenge to figure out what is the real bottleneck and there we have a bunch of solutions to uh, to help you in troubleshooting these cloud native applications so these are some of the popular use cases that we have seen uh, among our customers who are using Citrix ADC and Ingress Controller and the other set of tools uh, and infrastructure pieces that we told uh, for powering their cloud native applications. <clears throat> so with this, I come closer to the uh, demo section. Uh, where we are going to give you a flavor of how you can secure and route traffic to appropriate backend containers inside your applications. So I'm going to give you an overview of how we have taken one sample application, which is uh, an open source application. Uh, this is a microservices based application, a very simple uh, e-commerce website that is used to deliver socks and uh, uh, this is made up by a bunch of uh, microservices such as front-end microservice, such as all the UI components and then order management, uh, payment, shipping, and all these microservices. Uh, this set of, uh, this web of microservices is uh, used to deliver the overall cloud native uh, application to the end users. And what we have done is that we have inserted Citrix ADC at critical points. One is, uh, Citrix ADC VPX to uh, make sure that the uh, north-south traffic is secure and it is routed to the appropriate backend uh, pods. And then one CPX is used as ingress. Uh, we have a two tier of ingresses here, uh, which is good in cases if this microservices based application is deployed by a big team and you want some separation of concern. Uh, and then there are a bunch of other Citrix ADCs, CPX uh, number two and number three, which is used to uh, secure and route the east-west traffic. So this is how the demo setup is going to look like. And uh, we're going to show you um, how to expose these, this application to end-user traffic, and then how to uh, secure this traffic using TLS offload, and how to apply layer seven policies such as rewrite or responder on this in uh, east west on this north south and east west traffic and then how to further secure this ingress traffic using WAF policies and then towards the end we will show you how to troubleshoot if there is any issue in this application using uh, ADM. Uh, so so i would like to now hand over the control to uh, mayu who will do the demo uh, but i would also like to leave you with a message that some things may seem complex but uh, but essentially, it's because there's a lot of automation going on so that once the setup is uh, up and running, 
then uh, you don't have to do a lot of uh, uh, efforts to either troubleshoot the application or to uh, or to manage uh, the app, the infrastructure for example if today the application is serving 100 users and if it scales up to 150 users then the Kubernetes will take care of auto scaling of the backend application pods and Citrix ADC will automatically learn that the application pods have scaled 1.5x and it will automatically start serving traffic to the new pods or new containers that have come up. So you don't have to really go and do manual uh, configuration uh, in this environment. So that's the whole reason why there are a lot of YAML files, a lot of automation which is happening. So with that context, I would like to give the control to Mayur, who is going to show you the demo. Mayur, are you there? Hey, hi, Komal. Okay, thank you, Mayur. So I'm making you the presenter. And yeah, so show us all the cool stuff that you have. And another Dem thing is that uh, all these demos are on uh, public clouds. We have used uh, Azure and uh, AWS so that uh, it, because we see a lot of deployment of Azure and AWS in our customer base. So, so these demos comprise of Kubernetes clusters which are, are running on these public clouds. Yeah, thank you, Pomal, for the quick and uh, very good introduction. And hello everyone, my name is Mayur Patil and the greetings of the day. Today, I'm going to give you a very cool uh, demo about how we are going to load balance this sock shop application, which is deployed in AKS, which is Azure Managed Kubernetes Service. And uh, we'll see how we are going to apply some L7 policies on the ADCs such as VPX and the CPX so that we can control the traffic through which uh, we want to take some measures. So with that, as you see on the left hand side, the blue screen is my AKS cluster where uh, I have a two node cluster which I have already spun up. And on my right hand side, uh, right hand side, it's a green box, which is the VPX, which is also running on the Azure cloud. So I have used the uh, VPX 200 Mbps marketplace SKU to, um, to make this setup up and running. And for interest of time, what I have already done, I have also made uh, this sock shop application up and running. So as uh, Komal was pointing out in the topology, in the sock shop application, there are uh, multiple microservices which are talking to each other. As you see from the list of pods, the, there are so many different Pods, or you can say applications which are talking to each other and combined together it is forming one e-commerce website. So we'll see now how we are going to uh, make this load, uh, load balancing use case successful for this microservice example. And uh, so, so let me also show you that uh, my VPX box has no configuration for this sock shop application and uh, I'm now going to apply ingress rule, which will configure my VPX for this sock shop application so that this sock shop application can take the internet traffic. So let me show you the ingress file. So this is very simple ingress file and what it mentions that uh, I want to have my application exposed on this IP. So also on the right hand side let me show you the details for uh, ip addresses so this 9.4 once uh, this ip is the vip ip which is a uh, map to the public ip on the azure and uh, this will become my csv server ip and along with that i am just giving the details like what will be my host so host will be my citrix.viewsocks so i will be accessing this application on this host also, what will be my backend uh, service for, for the VPX? So as, uh, as in the topology you have seen, we have a two-tier deployment where uh, VPX is in front of CPX. So uh, the backend for VPX will be the CPX. So now let, let's do one thing. Let's apply this ingress and see how this configuration looks like on the VPX. Yeah. 
so i'm just applying my ingress and uh, yeah uh, now the message is that i have ingress applied on my aks cluster and if i do show csv server i will able to see that there is one entry created by citrix ingress controller which is also running in my aks cluster which i am highlighting now so this ingress controller is running in the aks cluster which listens to this aks api events and configures your adc uh, similarly you also see that there are three cpxs running which we have shown you in the topology and one of the cpx is uh, getting configured here in the uh, vpx so if i do this uh, show service group So when I do this show service group, you will able to see that uh, this 0 0.124 is the IP of my one of CPX, which is the CPX one. So yeah, I, as, I, as you can see here, I'm the hub, the part which I'm highlighting is the CPX pod having a 10.240.0.124 IP address which is mapped in the VPX and if I try to access this application yeah so you will see that I am accessing this application on plain text and the reason being uh, the we, we have seen we have applied a simple ingress policy where I wanted to show how my application is now exposed to the internet and uh, pretty much you can see I'm able to access this application I can just book the one socks one socks for me and I can very well place the order so this was one use case where I, I have shown you how we have applied the ingress now let me do one thing let me also uh, modify my ingress in a such a way that I will able to do SSL offload on the VPX and what changes we need to do in the ingress so on the left hand side as you see uh, we have a same ingress kind the front end IP is also same I, I you can see that there is addition of this TLS section so this TLS section defines that I want to have a SSL certificate available on my csv server so this sock shop secret is the kubernetes secret which is internally nothing but ssl certificate gets applied on the vpx so let me also show you yeah as you can see now there is no configuration available on the vpx because i have deleted the ingress or existing ingress and now uh, i am going to apply the new ingress which will do the ssl offload so so this is my ingress definition which i am applying on the aks and it says that ingress has been applied so once we do this show csv server you will see that uh, another entry has been created and you you can see right on the left hand side it's a case cluster on the right hand side is the vpx box these are two different entities running on the azure cloud and the way uh, the, in a fraction of seconds not even in few seconds it is uh, you are able to see the configuration has been pushed by the citrus ingress controller so from the latency point of view we will not even observe that latency is there for, for the control plane and uh, so point to note here uh, as i was showing we want to do the ssl offload so here uh, the csv server that has been created is of type ssl which will very well point back to the our uh, cpx which i was uh, showing you earlier now uh, let's access this over https so this is uh, https on which i am accessing the same application and uh, you can see uh, same application is available i can browse through the catalog and can do some shopping so uh, th this was about how easily you can apply ingress and make application available to the end user uh, uh, this this was the one use case now imagine that you want to apply some l7 policies on the vpx so that you can secure 
your application from some thread. Uh, one one good example would be that you want to allow certain traffic for the whitelisted IPs on this sock shop application or you just want to ignore or block the request for the blacklisted IPs for this sock shop application. So for that what you will do you will apply the responder policy uh, on the VPX and uh, if these applications are microservices then what do you need to do then we have to come to this uh, AKS cluster and uh, you have to write the rewrite responder policy through the CRD. So CRD is the custom resource definition provided by the Kubernetes helps you to define your um, native application APIs uh, which can be understood by the uh, AKS platform or the Kubernetes platform. So let me just show you one quick uh, policy L7 policy which we, we are calling as a responder policy that I'm going to apply on the VPX and what it says so it says that I want to blacklist some URLs and what are those for demo I want to block my entire host so anything and everything coming on the slash just block it and what should be my response so in the response I will I can give my own string or I can redirect to some custom page all those configuration you can make it available but to just uh, a simply simplification purpose I have just added the note here which we should able to see once uh, this policy has been applied so yeah on the left hand side as I was showing uh, I have shown you this uh, YAML file and on the right hand side let me show you my responder policy which are already available and you can see there are six policies available and no policies yet available for the Kubernetes. So let's go ahead and create th this uh, responder policy for blocking my sock shop application workload. So once I create this YAML manifest, it triggers the um, execution and in return what it will create it will create the responder policy on the vpx as you can see the seventh entry has been added so it says that like uh, on the slash you don't have a access for this application so now let's see and uh, try to access sock shop application and as you see uh, i am not able to go inside this application and the uh, responder policy is getting triggered also uh, you will able to see that uh, the hits has been increased to one so yeah so this is the one use case of uh, how you can apply this rewrite responder policy on the vpx similarly uh, as this is the service mesh like deployment which means cpx is doing not only north south traffic but it also doing the east west traffic communication so you you definitely want to apply some l7 policies for the east west traffic as well so where you will apply so in this topology we will apply it on the cpx so take an example that uh, i uh, i want to block the access on one of the one of the microservice so how it looks like so let's see this yaml manifest in this yaml manifest i am showing that for order microservice i will not allow any traffic from uh, from my client right so that's what i am mentioning like for this order uh, microservice do not entertain any uh, request so once i execute that it will create a responder policy on the cpx so that any request coming on the order will be blocked so let's see in the working demo so again let's go ahead and apply it yeah so as you see it has been applied now I have to go inside the CPX pod so that I will able to show you the responder policy and as I was mentioning this order uh, order microservice is being re uh, rendered through the CPX one so let's go inside this uh, CPX pod and understand how this 
policy has been configured. So this is the command to go inside the pod. And then I will just uh, do show responder policy that that is the same command that you you would have seen me applying on the vpx so as yeah as you see here this uh, new policy has been applied uh, for the c uh, on the cpx for the order gateway and uh, and if i want to show you how it will be in the demo so let's uh, again access this view workshop now that previous policy we have removed it hence i am now able to access the application and uh, let me see if i am able to log in yeah so i have just done the login so that i can place an order um, let's do some shopping like let's take multi color blocks put it in the cart and uh, go to the cart as i have a shipping address and payment details already mentioned i will try to proceed to check out as you see i'm trying to click this button but i'm not going inside why because once i place and click on this proceed to check out it will take me to the order page and since we have applied this policy here i will not able to go inside and to just show you now if i remove it yeah if i remove this policy which means i am now taking out those restriction on the cpx and now let's try to click here yes as you see now i am on my order page so it shows you like we we have that flexibility to apply l7 policies either on the vpx or on the cpx based on your use cases so if you want to restrict all your traffic at the uh, vpx level for the, at the north north south level you have, you can very well do that however some more policies you want to trigger for the east west communication that also very well we can do through uh, the through this rewrite responder policy that you can apply it on the cpx end so there is another use case that i would like to highlight here which is the waf use case uh, BAF use case is also very one of the crucial important use case that everybody wants to have for their workload on the uh, on the front end ADC, right? Because everybody wants to protect their app from the malicious attacks and from some uh, non clean bots. So what we are going to do now, what we will show you one of the demo now in which I'm going to apply a WAF policy on this VPX, which will uh, trigger deny URL um deny url uh, policy and it will block the access for one of my microservice so how does that policy look like let me show you here so this is my waf policy so we again we are leveraging the crd infra and we have created the waf crd to use the WAF policies on the ADCs. So I have applied this WAF CRD already and now I will apply this WAF instance. So WAF instance is nothing but a WAF policy that I'm going to apply. And the service name mentions this CPX ingress one, which means uh, this is uh, CPX ingress one is the backend for the VPX and this policy will be applied on the VPX. And uh, what it says like, uh, in the block URL, if you find the URL which is uh, ending with the category .html, let's uh, deny the access to it. Now let's see in the execution. Now I'm applying this policy, and uh, yeah, WAF policy has been applied. If I want to see how it reflects on the VPX, so we'll show. I will show as a firewall policy here and yes the, the one policy has been added by the citrix ingress controller with the uh, with the kts and uh, if i access this application so yeah the category dot html so you would have seen right i have applied this deny url for the 
category.html and i am able to see this uh, custom error page that we have created because uh, the waf policy has been triggered so and also just to show you the hit count so hit has gone up because uh, this policy has uh, has been executed so uh, yeah, from the demo point of view, right? For the SockShop application, I wanted to give a small overview that L7 policies can be applied either on the VPX or the CPX, or you can have your ingress with the uh, SSL offload, or you can have a, a HTTPS traffic at front end and the back end. All you can just have to do change the ingress, make some configuration, and we will show you like how we will do through the, our documentation and yeah so the use case is very simple right i mean this sock shop application which is native to the uh, cloud native how we can use it and show you the demo uh, that uh, i wanted to highlight now let me take you to another use case which is the uh, observability as you would have seen like there are tens of uh, pods which are nothing but microservices running uh, running inside this AKS cluster but imagine uh, for you definitely there will be uh, hundreds of such applications will be running and to do the troubleshooting of those applications through the through this portal will be very uh, challenging for that you need a way or some observability tool that will make your troubleshooting very easy and for that purpose what we have brought for you is ADM service graph so in the ADM service graph, we we are kind of helping you to troubleshoot your all the microservices. It helps you to provide the application health status. Uh, so so the 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 graph that is in front of you, right? It, it's the same graph that is uh, I have populated for the SockShop application, which is running in the AKS, and it shows you it, it it gives you the holistic view of how many different applications are there in your workload how many different adcs are in place and how how is the communication happening through them right so as you see the client is reaching out to the tier one adc which is my vpx uh, which has ip like uh, ending with 8.4 and then uh, since there is one cpx which is back into the tier one it is also highlighted here and this cpx is uh, talking to this uh, front end headless so this is the home page for your that sock shop application which i was showing you earlier and after that uh, there are multiple uh, multiple backend applications which are talking to this main headless uh, front end service and this is the way we are able to see the details and for example you want to know more about in any particular application what you have to do you just have to go to that uh, pod and just over on it and you will see that some golden matrix we are populating for you for example how many total hits are there on that pod what is the total response uh, what is the total uh, response time it has been taken also we have added new parameter like what is the response time in terms of p99 uh, so it it help, i mean it helps you to determine uh, how long it's going to take to respond back right and a so few more details like errors are there any errors and if there are any errors what are those so we'll see that uh, in the more details so for, uh, so as you see we have view for uh, like if you want to go and dig down more for that pod respectively then you just have to go and click on the view details and here we will show you that uh, how this uh, communication is happening so you are, you will see that this uh, uh, 0.200 right it is my uh, uh, the cpx which will talk to this front end headless and this front end headless will talk to the four different uh, back end uh, microservices for this application and then at the down as you see there will there are um, key metrics that we have given you which uh, we have also summarized in the uh, in the previous uh, previous window so those are the details uh, if we wanted to show you here now uh, let me now again take you to the another use case which are the transaction logs so transaction logs are very important right to understand uh, which application is talking to another application uh, what, what are those details uh, am i having any error uh, 
transactions right how you will able to find that so we have a transaction summary on the right hand side where uh, i just have to go and uh, select the error codes for now i can see there are only two error codes but let's say if i just want to select uh, how many different transactions are there which uh, which are resulted into 201 response code so it, it will map it here so it, it shows that i have total 16 now and uh, if i just go inside the detail of one of this uh, one of this transaction you will able to see that which pod is talking to another pod uh, I am just using this pod and microservice change interchangeably. So both are actually uh, mean the same. So this uh, pod like this service uh, is talking to another service like shipping headless through the ADC. Then what is the response time? How much time this shipping headless has taken to respond back uh, on which IP it is uh, running, right? And how is your content type? So all those information also we put it here to summary to understand uh, how different transactions are in there uh, to get the view uh, in the easy manner. Now there is also one interesting use case uh, that is nothing but uh, how I do know about the latency aspect for the microservices. So for that we have added the trace summary. It is important to know like how which application is taking more time to respond and do I need to pay attention for that or it is desired that this application is taking uh, uh, X amount of time, right? So all those re details you can also figure out from this uh, table. So again, like we have a like kind of filter here whether you want to go for the request type 200 uh, sorry request type of get post delete or response code of some like uh, 500 so if i want to see like which applications microservices has given me the error i can just go down here understand uh, okay i have this get request and then uh, i can see that uh, it has called one service which is a user headless service and it has given me one error i can just uh, drill down more by clicking on the this trace information and it gives me the kind of bar chart which uh, which allows me to know uh, this particular service has taken uh, let's say around three milliseconds but imagine that uh, when you have a multiple calls happening in the cascading manner right so you will have a multiple bars piled up here and you can able to determine how among those which one has taken maximum time and you can uh, you can then, then troubleshoot uh, for it so this was a quick overview about ADM service graph. So ADM service graph definitely helps you to do uh, not only the observability stuff, but it also helps you to understand how your entire workload is deployed. And uh, so, yeah. So with that, uh, th this was my uh, second demo. Now let me quickly touch upon my third demo. And uh, it is all about the multi-cluster deployment. Yeah, let me put it into the presentation mode. Right. So as you see here, right, uh, in the demo two, what I'm going to show you in the demo two, I'm going to show you the how we are going to achieve high availability and the resiliency for your application through uh, multi-cluster uh, ingress solution. What does it mean? So you would have heard this GSLB uh, for the traditional three-tier deployment. Now we have extended that use case for the microservices as well. And from the topology on the left-hand side, uh, I have a workload running in my uh, EKS cluster and the same workload is also running in the AKS, work, uh, AKS cluster. And what we are going to do, we are going to do the failover mechanism. So in the failover, when primary is down, the backup will take the traffic and it will serve the traffic. So in our deployment, I am making my Azure Kubernetes service workload as a primary workload. So whenever traffic is landing on the VPX, it will uh, it will give the DNS resolution for the VIP, which is which is uh, for the VPX of my Azure, and it will serve the traffic. And whenever there is a, a no availability for application. 
uh, then this DNS resolution will happen for the another VPX, which is in the AWS and having the workload for the uh, EKS. So now let's again go back to the screen. Here uh, I just have to come back and I have to get my the details for other cluster. For demo purpose, I have created another cluster, which uh, which I'm going to let you know. Which I'm able to connect. Yeah. So let me connect first to my ADC. Yeah. Hey, uh, Mayur, there is a question. Uh, yes. Which I think will be useful because you showed the topology of GSLB. Uh, is the same ADC being used for uh, VPA for for ingress and for GSLB? Yes. So can you go to the slide and show the topology and and clarify this question? Really, yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks for uh, thanks, Pomal, uh, for bringing that question. So yes, as as I was pointing out, right. So you can see from the topology, there is this VPX box, and uh, DNS traffic is landing on this VPX box. So this this VPX is having the GSLB configuration. So this, this device is also acting as a GSLB device to do the DNS resolution. And on the same box, we are also having a workload of a particular application, uh, the, nothing but the application which is running inside the microservices. So same VPX can be used as your GSLB device as well as the ingress device. I hope uh, it it answers the question. And in the demo, also we will show you the configuration of the VPX, which will also clarify this question ahead. Okay, thank you, thank you, man. Yes, cool. So, so as I am connected to my uh, another cluster, so here uh, what we have done, we have taken very simple uh, uh, use case, and in this use case, what we are showing is that. Uh, I have uh, already deployed my hot drink application. So my workload is already up and running. And uh, also to show you from the VPX. Yes, so from the v VPX also uh, you can see that I have already one CSV server uh, for this uh, GSLB, which is already up and running. So this will be taking my traffic because uh, when I do the show IP, you will see that uh, this 5.4 is my VIP. So this 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 belongs to the ingress traffic. So the configuration which is on the right hand side is the configuration to take the ingress traffic. I am not showing yet the JSLP configuration. I, I will come to that part later. Uh, coming to the AKS cluster. So in the AKS cluster, uh, similarly, we have a Citrus in this controller, which is doing the configuration on this uh, right hand side box. And uh, so let's let's do one thing. Let's uh, test out our uh, deployment. So now I am using the uh, I'm just trying to access my beverage application, which is the hot drink application. And uh, I am having this ingress. So let me show you ingress so you will see that right so my ingress host is this one which is accessible on uh, uh, 443 and i am actually accessing it here and just uh, to give you more information if you if you notice I am just pointing my pod, which is giving this traffic on the internet. So you can see like dot uh, 135 and then uh, dot 104, right? So these are the IPs through which my uh, hot drink is accessible. And if I show you my AKS cluster, so hot drink application has two pods and the respective IPs are this 135 and 104, which you could see uh, through which I am getting the access. So, so this 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 uh, defines that I am getting my application now from this AKS cluster. And uh, for now, let's before I jump onto the GSLB configuration, let me execute one command, which is uh, deleting the deployment. Yeah. 
what i am doing now i am deleting my hotring deployment from the aks what it will do it will kill the hotring pod from this aks cluster all right so it, it is terminating so once so what 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 is going to happen let me explain that so in the failover scenario when the application is not available uh, from the aks cluster gslb configuration which is available on the vpx uh, will understand that the, the site of this azure vpx is down and the ingress service is not available it will do the dns resolution for the vpx which is running in the aws uh, cloud and from that we will able to get the traffic so right now as you see there uh, there is hot ring application has been removed and uh, let me try to access this application again yeah yes so uh, I, I just want you to make a note that now i am accessing this application which is available now and uh, so dot 10.0.3.83 and uh, one more ip will be there this year uh, 10.0.6.209 these are the two ports ips from which we are getting the access so so let's see from where this pod information is coming up so now i will request komal to show the eks environment where this hot trick application is running through which we are able to see this uh, status up okay thank you mayur uh, so so thanks for that uh, introduction to this demo so as you can see that uh, uh, that Mayur had shown that the application was running on Azure, and uh, and he killed the application on Azure. So so this application, the same application, is still visible, uh, but now it is being rendered from AWS. And if you go back to the architecture that uh, Mayur had shown, uh, so so the same application is being run from EKS, Amazon EKS, and for from Azure uh, Kubernetes service. Uh, this now application has been now killed in AKS. So the failover will happen by uh, Citrix ADC on its own because these two VPXs are uh, running in GSLB mode and this GSLB is now automatic. So this GSLB controller, this detected that this application is no more present in this uh, in AKS and it has done a failover so that now the backup data center or backup uh, cluster which is on amazon eks now it will start handling the traffic so i'll show you how this works <clears throat> so as you can see that the app is running on my uh, browser it is showing the ip addresses which starts with 10.0. dot something uh, the other so if i refresh this page i should see a new ip address which is 10.0.3 if i refresh it then the IP address will change again. Okay, so it's rotating between 10.0.3 and 10.0.6, and which is the which are the IP addresses of the Kubernetes pods that I am running on EKS. So if you see that these are the Kubernetes pods running on Amazon EKS cluster, kubectl get pods, and these are the two front end hardening pods. So 10.3. 10.0.3 and 10.0.6 uh, so just we'll go to the amazon eks cluster and i'll show you again this workload which is running on this uh, masterclass demo uh, uh, eks cluster and let's go to the workload and you can see the front end hot drinks is a deployment and these are the two application pods which are running and uh, now the same application is being failed over to aws eks and uh, and so so this is the demo but what is happening behind the scene is that we have uh, 
<clears throat> we have deployed this application with the, the GSLB controller. And in the GSLB controller, we have specified the details of these two sites, Azure site and AWS site. And what are the public IP of the GSLB endpoints in these two, topo in these two uh, clusters? So this is the AWS site, and this is the um, Azure site's IP address. And using Kubernetes secrets, we have provided the credentials for, uh, uh, for the GSLB controller to log in to both the VPXs. So this is one configuration. The second configuration is uh, for GTP. This is the global traffic policy where we have specified what is the rule uh, for, uh, for directing the DNS uh, queries. So is it round robin or is it failover or is it uh, least response time? So we have specified failover in this example. And you can see that the uh, EKS cluster is not the primary while the AKS cluster is the primary. So if everything was working fine, all the traffic would go to AKS all the time. But since there was a, uh, but since the AKS cluster is no more responsive, now the traffic is being served by EKS cluster. And uh, for those of who you who are familiar with the uh, GSLB, uh, what is happening behind the scenes is that these controllers, these uh, GSLB controllers, they are configuring uh, GSLB on Citrix ADC. You don't have to do this manually. This is all done automatically, and this is all uh, the, the magic that we have done with the ingress controller and the GSLB controller. And you can see right now, there are two uh, service group. The, there, is, there are two entries in this service group. Uh, one is about, uh, uh, about the Azure side, which is down right now, and this is the AWS site, which is up. Okay. So, so this was a short uh, demo of the multi-cluster use case, and uh, I would like to do a quick poll to understand uh, uh, which of these uh, use cases uh, resonated to you, and then we will uh, close the webinar. So yeah. All right, so we'll give you five more seconds to complete this poll. Um, all right, thank you for your answers. And with that, I come to the last slide of my presentation, where, uh, where these are some of the useful resources to, uh, to get started and to become an expert on our Citrix uh, ADC and ADM's uh, modern application portfolio. Uh, there are a bunch of uh, links here. Uh, you will, you will, uh, you, you can go through and and see how these solutions work. But the one which I would like to highlight is this fourth point, where uh, we have uh, we have we have provided examples to get started. So these are ready-made examples, ready-made configurations that you, where you just need to key in some values from your environment, and then these solutions will be up and running in your uh, environment as well, either on-prem or on public cloud. So do try out this fourth uh, uh, link where we have provided a lot of examples. And if you have more questions, then please reach out to this email inbox. This is a public inbox, uh, app modernization at the rate citrix.com, where you will have direct access to the product managers and the engineering leads uh, who are working on the uh, modern application solution from Citrix. So that's all that I had. Uh, thanks a lot for your time, for your patience. And uh, it's over to Ka Carol to uh, yes. close the webinar. Yeah, thank you. Yep, we just have a few more updates. Thank you, Somar, Kamal, and Mahir. Um, that was great. We had a lot of demos, which was fantastic. And then I'm going to go ahead and take over presenter mode um, to just kind of give a quick update on some of the uh, things we want to let you know about. Just let me know when you show my screen because I know it's always seems to be taking its sweet time. <laughs> Can you see yeah. my screen? Yes, yes, it's visible. The PowerPoint? Yes, it's in the presentation mode right now. Okay, perfect. So there's a couple of updates. Um, for those of you that stuck it out, I'm sorry, it looks starts started a little late there. Um, 
I wanted to let you know about. We are actually doing a demo day, which I'm very excited about. This virtual event is actually taking place August 25th. Um, uh, at 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. It's really unique. We know that a lot of people are saturated with virtual events. And so we really um, decided to make this a little different. Um, the, the, the whole idea is a practical blueprint to building a secure hybrid work. And what's really exciting about this demo day is we really took a concerted effort to focus the agenda almost exclusively on demos. So actually showcasing what we talk about. So really excited about this. This just launched. Um, and for those of you that are still on the call, if you register now, so we have a special offer going on where the first uh, 100 people that register to the event can upload a photograph for a one of a kind caricature. So you are officially the first people to find out about this. So I, I suggest that you go on citrix.com slash events and check out, um, register for the event, and you can qualify to be one of the uh, 100 who get that caricature. Um, the other thing I wanted to let you know is if you were, um, if you tuned in early, you know that we covered um, secure internet access service. There was a really great blog that was written around this. So if you're interested in learning more on that topic, there was actually a blog written by one of our um, consultants and professional services that talks a little more of a deep dive around that. So check that out. And um, we also, I think it was our May masterclass, we announced um, an addition to the ADM service. Um, which is the security advisory tool that is available within ADM service. So if you are, are using ADM service or want to learn more about it, highly recommend um, you check out that masterclass. Uh, it's on YouTube, also on our page, and you can read this blog to find out about the latest updates there. And then another announcement we wanted to make is that we recently um, partnered. We've been, ADC has been supporting policy automation through Terraform for years, and it recently was announced um, that we joined the HashiCorp as a technology partner. So if you'd like to learn more about that, this has been posted. And then our August masterclass is taking place on August 11th, and our topic for that session will be SD-WAN. So for those of you that have um, maybe are interested in learning more about SD-WAN or specifically how our SD-WAN works um, with our current uh, Citrix virtual app and desktop uh, products. This is a really great session to join. It'll be a combination of that plus what's new with SD-WAN, so some of the newest um, features and capabilities. So highly recommend you check that out. And then finally, again, for those of you that stayed, Please fill out that survey. Um, again, it's a great way to qualify to win um, our Beats Studio Buds. Uh, and again, we really just want your feedback and, and help us improve in terms of the topic and content. So definitely take a minute. It's only, I think, five or six questions to fill that out. And then um, you will be entered in a drawing to win um, some Beats Buds. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us today. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will be sending out a link to this recording and the PowerPoint deck um, by Friday. So thanks again. Bye-bye.